The top stories tonight in Y News. President Rodrigo Duterte admits that he was wrong to claim that he could end the country's illegal drugs problem within three to six months of taking office. The number of close contacts of the Finnish female who was the first detected Omicron BA 2.12 carrier in the country has increased to 44. Authorities suspect that overloading could be the cause of the bridge collapse that killed at least four people in Bohol. The World Health Organization warns of rising cases of measles around the globe. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, April 28, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am Herlin Delgado. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news. President Rodrigo Duterte admitted that he can no longer fulfill his 2016 campaign promise to end the illegal drug problem in the country. Rosalie Gons will tell us why. months left before he steps down from office on June 30, 2022. President Rodrigo Duterte admits he was wrong when he campaigned to end the illegal drug trade in the country in three to six months. The president made the statement when he led the inauguration of the Cebu Cordova Link Expressway project yesterday. Sinasabi ko, I can clean it in six months. And after that, I realized na nagkamali talaga ako. Subrang, maybe it's hubris, it was campaign time, payabanga naman yung kampanya. The president reiterated he did not know how endemic the drug problem is and admits that rich drug users are hard to track. Pagdating ko sa Manila, dalala ko yung chief of police ko, yung si Bato, anak ka na, pag yung binuksan na yung records, paano ako magandang? Six generals of the PNP were playing with drugs. Sabi ko, paano tayo mabubuhay nito? The anti-illegal drug campaign of the administration became controversial not only in the Philippines but also abroad because of the thousands of lives claimed during police operations. In November 2021, the International Criminal Court suspended its probe of the anti-drug campaign of the Duterte administration after the Philippine government asked to defer the probe, insisting it is investigating the drug killings in the country. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Commission on Elections, or COMELEC, reassures that all voters will be allowed to vote on May 9, including those with symptoms of COVID-19. Meanwhile, the COMELEC says the online precinct finder is not the final basis to determine the registration status of a voter. Janice Inhente reports why. COVID-19 infection will not be a hindrance for voters who want to exercise their right to suffrage come the election day. Comelec Commissioner George Irwin Garcia explains there will be isolation polling places or IPPs in which individuals showing COVID-19 symptoms can vote separately. Meron po tayong inalaan na isolation polling precinct na kung saan pag nakita ang temperatura nyo ay 37 degrees at pat mataas at hindi nagbabago o kung hindi man nandyan nga yung symptomas, meron po kami mga mag-aassist sa inyo na naka-PPE, may mga medical team po kami na may isang lamesa nga dyan na kung saan yun po ang kanilang katungkulan na tulungan at i-assist po yung mga kababayan natin na may mga symptomas ng COVID-19 upang sila ay makaboto. Yung po mga balota po ninyo mula sa presinto kung saan dapat kayo boboto ay ibibigay mismo sa inyo, dadalhin po sa inyo at pagkatapos later na po yung ibabalik para mabilang po yung mga balota. 
Even for those voters with COVID-19 and are in isolation facilities, Garcia said they can also vote if they are allowed to leave the quarantine facility. But the Comelec reminds voters with symptoms or COVID-19 should wear face masks and face shields and be cautious in interacting with people on election day to prevent the spread of the disease. Meanwhile, the Comelec clarifies that voters with misspelled names and whose names are not found in the online precinct finder can still cast their votes. Commissioner Garcia explains the precinct finder is not considered a final basis for determining the registration status of a voter. The voter's information sheet will also be used as a basis since it has more accurate details. Huwag po sila mag-alala, huwag po huwag mo mag-worry at sinasabi, bakit ako na-deactivate, hindi naman ako deactivated. Hintayin nyo rin po, meron po tayong voters information sheet na pinapamahagi na sa buong bansa sa lahat ng 67.4 million Pilipino. Sa kasalukoy po yung si Kraki, nakaka-41 million na po tayong nadidistribute sa buong Pilipinas. So yung mga hindi pa po nakakatanggap, baka po nandun kayo sa natitira na hindi pa nadidistribute ng COMELEC mm -hmm. ng mga voters information sheet. Jenny Sehente, UN TV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Presidential candidate Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. was planning to hire more non teaching staff in government schools should he win the 2022 presidential elections. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. is fully aware of the predicament of public school teachers. He said if he wins in the presidency, the former senator vowed to provide timely salary and benefits for teachers. So that's not allow that kind of situation to happen anymore. First of all, that we have to support our teachers, not only financially, not yung kahit na, yung sahod nila at the very least on time. Yung mga benefits nila dumadating talaga. Um, and we have to support them also with training. In a separate statement, Marcos stressed that one way to maintain high-quality education in public schools is to hire more non-teaching staff in public schools. Marcos said many teachers suffer from work overload as some perform unrelated tasks like librarians or even property custodians. The Partido Federal ng Pilipinas Standard Bearer wants to change what he calls unproductive system. He said adding non-teaching staff would give teachers more time to prepare for their lessons and focus only on the subjects they are assigned to. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Presidential candidate Vice President Lenny Robredo will leave it up to her campaign team the fate of the 12th spot of their Senate slate. Arlene Delgado will tell us why. With only 11 days left before the May 9 elections, independent presidential candidate Vice President Lenny Robredo says she will let her campaign team to decide whether or not a 12th senatorial bet will be included in their ticket. This comes after guest candidate Senate Majority Leader Juan Miguel Migzubiri has been dropped from the slate. As a result, some supporters of the Robredo ticket have called on Robredo to include senatorial candidate Neri Colmenares. According to Robredo, she is now focused on the campaign and for now, her team is inclined not to add another senatorial bet. We we'll let the voters decide kung sino yung idadagdag nilang kapalit kasi marami yata yung naka, nakapila na pagpipilian. Ang problema kasi natin ngayon, oras eh. Na talagang wala nang oras. So, um, ako, ako basta sa akin, ang pakiusap ko na lang sa kanila, kayo na magdesisyon, basta ako... Uh, all my waking hours, uh, nasa kampanya lang ako. Today, Robredo went back to Quezon Province for the campaign trail. In Katanawan, the independent candidate was endorsed by its mayor, Ramon Orfanel. Addressing her supporters, Robredo says her priorities will include providing housing to fishermen and free dormitories to college students should she win the presidency. A Grand People's Rally was also held in Lucena City. In the 2016 vice presidential race, Robredo won in Quezon Province with over 385,000 votes. 
Meanwhile, Robredo's running mate, Senator Francis Kiko Pangilinan, welcomed the Sumido farmers who marched from Bukidnon to Manila to campaign for the tandem. The farmers of San Simon Pampanga, who first endorsed Pangilinan, also joined the senator for a walk. In 2007, the Sumido farmers marched from Bukidnon to Manila as part of their fight in reclaiming their ancestral land. Robredo was one of the lawyers who helped them on their battle. This time, just like what they did in 2016, they are marching on to give back to Robredo. Tomorrow, the independent candidate will be visiting once again the vote-rich province of Laguna. Horlin Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Ten major political parties have been given access to the transparency server in the 2022 elections. Dante Amento will give us the details live. Yes, Dante. Harleen, for the sake of full transparency, the poll body has resolved to allow 10 additional major political parties to access the transparency server of the election results on May 9. Commissioner Marlon Casquejo says these political parties will be included in the two political parties which will be declared as dominant majority party and dominant minority party respectively. Thus, there are now 12 political parties given access to the transparency server. But for full transparency, we include the 10 major political parties which was approved yesterday by the NBANC. Among the identified parties are the ruling party, PDP Laban, National Unity Party, Action Democratico, Partido Federal ng Pilipinas of Presidential Candidate Ferdinand Marcos Jr., Nationalista Party, Liberal Party, Laban ng Demokratikong Pilipino, United Nationalist Alliance, Lakas, Christian Muslim Democrats, Partido para sa Demokratikong Reforma, and Akbayan Citizens Action Party. Dagdag na po yung ating 10 major political parties. They will have access to our transparency server. When we say access to transparency server, they will be receiving uh, raw data, CSV file coming from each precinct. Kapag may nagtatransmit, so makakatanggap din yung ating mga political parties. Casquejo adds, under the automation law, the kapisanan ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas or KBP and Citizens Arm, which is the PPCRV, will also be allowed to access the transparency server. Meanwhile, there are also 20 media organizations that will be accredited to access the server. And each media outlet will provide its own laptop. The poll body will conduct a walkthrough of the transparency media server at the University of Santo Tomas in Manila on Saturday, April 30. And that's our latest live. Back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Dante Amento, reporting live from Quezon City. Bohol Governor Art Yap says the collapse of Clarin Bridge in Lawai, Bohol, that killed four people, may have been caused by overloaded vehicles. Lalaine Moreno reports. Four people were confirmed dead, including an Austrian national, after the decade-old Clarin Bridge in Luai, Bohol collapsed yesterday afternoon. The other three identified bodies were residents of Bohol. Authorities reported that there were 12 utility vehicles and a delivery truck carrying sand and gravel that were passing the Clarin Bridge when the structure collapsed. The Clarin was reportedly damaged partially during the 7.2 magnitude quake in 2013. It was reportedly repaired to accommodate the flowing traffic until a replacement is constructed. The possible cause of uh, why the building, uh, the bridge collapsed was because the bridge is only for flowing traffic, parang nahitabo, na stationary um, traffic, and there were a lot of cargo vehicles on the bridge. And the bridge could not take the weight, and that's the reason why it collapsed. At least 23 survivors were rescued. Authorities, meanwhile, are searching for three more vehicles and an undetermined number of passengers that fell into Lubok River. The provincial government will be uh, extending full financial assistance to the four victims. There are three local victims. Unfortunately, there was also one 
uh, Austrian national a male and uh, we have contacted the Austrian embassy uh, about repatriating his remains. Meanwhile, motorists are advised to use the diversion road. Lelaine Moreno, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Health identifies 44 close contacts of the country's first BA.2.12 Omicron subvariant case. Aiko Miguel reports. The 52-year-old Finnish female as the first BA.2.12 Omicron subvariant case had 44 close contacts, 9 close contacts in Quezon City, 5 in Benguet and 30 when she was on board a plane going to Manila. The DOH is currently monitoring the health status of her close contacts. Meron na tayo sa ngayon na uh, apat na put apat na kinokontact tracing at uh, meron na nga yung unang sham may dalawa doon na uh, symptomatic kaya uh, isinailalim sa RT-PCR testing so negative naman. Hindi natin isinasailalim sa testing lahat ng mga na-exposed. So yun lang pong mga nagpakita ng mga symptoms. Karamihan naman walang symptoms. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III said, This is not something that Filipinos should worry about. BA.2.12 Omicron subvariant is not yet identified as variant of concern, nor interest by the World Health Organization. So lumalabas na parang Omicron din ito, yung naunang BA.2, na uh, relatively mild at uh, hindi naman humantong sa mas uh, malubhang uh, karamdaman, kampanti ako na ito ay uh, hindi naman uh, uh, mag magdudulot ng uh, peligroso o malubhang karamdaman. So kung may symptoms, isolate. So yung pare lang ating message, uh, wear the best fitted mask. In an interview, Health Spokesperson Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergeres said, that BA.2.12 subvariant is 2.5 times more infectious but not more severe than the original Omicron variant. Undersecretary Vergere also said there is also a possibility of a more infectious subvariant already spreading in the country. On the other hand, Secretary Duque said if a COVID-19 variant enters the country and spreads, the country's healthcare system and frontliners are ready to execute proper COVID-19 response. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The economy of the National Capital Region grew at a slower pace to 4.4% in 2021. The services sector continued to account for the largest share in the region's economy. Rosalie Kos reports. The economy of the National Capital Region recovered last year from a double-digit contraction in 2020, according to a report of the Philippine Statistics Authority. However, the capital is 15th in terms of growth among the 17 regions. From 10% decline in 2020, the NCR's economic output went up by 4.4% in 2021. This is amid the pandemic and gradual easing of COVID-19 restrictions. If you will uh, differentiate some of the regions and the cities, mas maraming lockdown ng NCR. That is also a contributor to the slow growth rate of the NCR in comparison to other regions. Metro Manila's economy is estimated at 6,158 trillion pesos last year, 6.2% higher from 5.8 trillion pesos in 2020. The industry with the highest contribution to NCR's growth is the services sector at 81.4% or equivalent to 4.8 trillion pesos. All 17 regions in the country posted increases in 2021, which lead to 5.7% annual growth rate of gross domestic product. Calabarzon has the highest growth, but Metro Manila remains to be the highest contributor to the Philippine economy. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. In celebration of Labor's Day on May 1, the Department of Labor and Employment will open a jobs fair. More than 82,000 job vacancies are up for grabs. Eileen Seruda reports. 
In line with the national government's recovery plan amid the COVID-19 pandemic, the Department of Labor and Employment will open a job fair on May 1, Labor Day, to help individuals who lost their jobs and livelihood due to restrictions caused by the pandemic. Uh, kami po ay nakapagrehistro na ng mahigit pong uh, 82,000 na mga uh, job vacancies. Ang 61,000 po nito ay local employment at yung 21,000 po ay overseas. The Labor Department's attorney, Benjo Santos Binavides, said the Labor Day celebration will align with the theme, Matatag na Manggagawa, Matatag na Bansa. He said that despite the pandemic and restrictions, Filipino workers still managed to survive. For interested individuals, 82,000 job vacancies are available. 61,000 are for local employment, while 21,000 are job opportunities overseas. The Labor Department set up 24 job fair sites across the country. Attorney Benavides said most of the vacancies are from the manufacturing sector, business process outsourcing or BPO, and retail. For overseas employment, there are vacancies for nursing aid, food server, and construction workers. Dole advised applicants to bring a copy of their resumes and be prepared for on-the-spot interviews. The Labor Department also assures minimum health and safety protocols are implemented to avoid COVID-19 spread. Vaccination areas are also available in job fair sites for applicants who have not yet received their COVID-19 vaccination. Meanwhile, the Hospital for Overseas Filipino Workers in Pampanga will be inaugurated and operational on Sunday. Bubuksan po natin yung uh, outpatient uh, services. So pwede na po magpakonsulta yung ating mga kababayang OFW. Ito po ay libre. Uh, magsadya lamang po dun sa venue. The accreditation and license for the OFW hospital is still being processed to accommodate inpatient services. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Trade and Industry explains sugar importation should be allowed in the Philippines. DTI Secretary Ramon Lopez says they have been requesting for this from the regulators but have failed due to court rulings. Ashur Kadapan Jr. explains why live. Uh, yes, Asher, good evening. Go ahead. Good evening, Will. The current supply of sugar in the country is low due to inadequate local production. While its demand, especially by food processing companies, is high, the Department of Trade and Industry explains the Agriculture Department has been helping the sugar farmers increase their production. But DTI Secretary Ramon Lopez says if the low supply of sugar will go on, its price in the market may double. With this, the agency sees importation of sugar as an immediate solution, which will benefit all Filipinos. Kung ano yung ma-produce ng local at hindi na kayang ma-supplyan yung demand, dapat i-allow yung importation kasi kung hindi, sisipa ng doble yung presyo. Secretary Lopez added that the current price of local sugar is twice of the imported ones, which impacts the revenue of manufacturers. The agency has already requested the Sugar Regulatory Administration to allow sugar importation, but their bid has been on hold in correspondence with a temporary restraining order. Uh, yun talaga yung aming matagal nang nire-request sa, sa SRA. Uh, ang nangyari nga na TRO, yung dapat na plant importation, pati ng mga sugar users, yung mga gumagawa, mga food processors, Mga gumagawa ng uh, mga soft drinks, mga drinks. Well, the prices of sugar in the market now is about 65 pesos per kilo. The DTI says consumers may buy sugar from their Presyong Reasonable Dapat pop-up stores located in selected supermarkets across Metro Manila. Will? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Asher Kadapan Jr. reporting live from Quezon City. And for the news abroad, the United Nations announced that there has been a surge of measles worldwide. The UN also said the rise in measles cases is also a forewarning of the likely outbreaks of other diseases. Marvidal Finn reports why live. <music> 
Yes, Marvi, good evening. Good evening, Marielle. The coronavirus pandemic interrupted many vital vaccination campaigns for various diseases, including measles. Cases of measles surged by 79% up from January to February of 2021 to January to February of this year. 21 measles outbreaks were reported in the last 12 months up to this month. Most of them were in Africa and Eastern Mediterranean. Somalia had the highest number of cases with more than 9,000. Other countries with the highest rate of measles outbreak include Yemen, Afghanistan, Nigeria, and Ethiopia. Furthermore, the UN agency said 57 vaccination campaigns in 43 countries were postponed at the start of the pandemic. This amounts to over 23 million children who missed out on routine vaccinations. World Health Organization Chief Tedro Adhanom Ghebreyesus called on health experts and governments to get back on track and launch catch-up vaccination campaigns against various diseases. Muriel? Thank you, Marvidal Finn, reporting live. Authorities increase their efforts across the low caseload in the city of Beijing in preventing a major COVID-19 outbreak aimed to stave off a Shanghai-like lockdown. Beijing has so far rolled out three rounds of COVID-19 mass testing this week across a number of districts, with nearly 22 million residents lining up to get throat swabs. This followed multiple lockdowns of apartment buildings, residential compounds and complexes, office blocks, universities, schools, tourist and entertainment venues. Fences were also placed with the police on watch to restrict people le from leaving the areas. Although cases are still rising relatively low, authorities are not taking any chances and are racing to contain the fresh Omicron outbreak. Myanmar's Aung San Suu Kyi was sentenced to five years in jail by the country's military regime due to corruption. This is in addition to other convictions where she has already been previously found guilty. Jose Lito Likido will tell us why live. Yes, Sosalito, go ahead. Good evening, Marielle. The 76-year-old former leader of Myanmar, Aung San Suu Kyi, was charged with allegedly accepting 11.4 kilogram or 402 ounces of gold and cash payments totaling to $600,000 from former Yangon Chief Minister Pyo Min Tin, who is also her protege turned accuser. The latest conviction takes her total prison time to 11 years as she has already been found guilty for inciting dissent against the military and breaking public health COVID rules last December 2021 and for having contraband walkie-talkie radios in her house and breaching more COVID rules last January. Aside from these, Ms. Suki still faces 10 other corruption charges which carrying a maximum penalty of 15 years, as well as charges on electoral fraud and violating the official secret acts. Meanwhile, supporters of the former leader denounced the trial as farcical and even demanded her immediate release, adding that the charges have been trumped up by the junta regime to ensure Ms. Suu Kyi is jailed for life, according to Deputy Asia Director of Human Rights Watch, Phil Robertson. However, Myanmar's military regime has dismissed such allegations, saying Ms. Suu Kyi has received fair trials and due to due legal process so far. Meanwhile, the military regime's crackdown and dissent has led to the death of a total of 1,800 people so far, according to the Assistance Association of Political Prisoners. This has led to continued fighting within the country, while the mil military faces widespread opposition, with some parts of the country engulfed in armed conflict. Back to you, Mariel. Thank you, Joselito Liquido, reporting live. In its first extraordinary General Assembly, the United Nations World Tourism Organization, or UNWTO, has debated Russia's membership and eventually voted to remove Russia in the organization. Ia Devera will tell us why live. Yes, Ia, go ahead. Marielle Russia's membership in the UN tourism body has been suspended with immediate effect on Wednesday over its invasion of Ukraine. 
A total of 99 countries were represented in the General Assembly held in Madrid, Spain, with more than two-thirds of its member states supporting the move to suspend Russia. Spanish Tourism Minister Reyes Maroto presided over the Assembly and said that Russia's invasion goes against the values of United Nations, such as peace, prosperity, and universal respect. The Russian delegation did not defend its position, but instead announced its withdrawal ahead of the meeting. Meanwhile, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said the suspension, the suspension will not affect the tourism sector in Russia and that external directions remain open. UNWTO Secretary General Zurab Polulikashvili said in a tweet that peace is a fundamental right and actions will always have consequences. Marielle? Thank you, Ia De Vera, for that live report. Student loans may be facing a change in the United States as U.S. President Joe Biden hinted at canceling student loans. Olga Chalian will give us the details live. Yes, Paul? Ariel, of the 43 million student loan borrowers in the United States, many could be seeing a $10,000 reduction in student debt as the president plans to relieve loans nearing the end of August. In the past, President Joe Biden had showed his support for the movement to forgive $10,000 in loans per person, although the public believes this amount could now be higher. According to Tony Cardenas, a United States representative met with President Biden earlier this week regarding the student loans and addressed that no decision for the amount to be canceled has been made yet. Amidst the uncertainty, U.S. Press Secretary Jen Psaki reassured that the president will make a decision about cancellation before the student loan pause ends, highlighting the importance of the issue to the president. He would make a decision about any cancellation of student debt uh, before the conclusion of that pause on student loans, but I don't have anything to preview for you at this point in time. It's also an issue that impacts many individuals, young people, middle-aged people of all races. It is something that he has uh, he has uh, played a, has been a vital uh, priority to the president, which again is why not a not a single person has played paid a penny, a dime, a dime or a penny um, in student uh, loans since he took office. Meanwhile, the decision to cancel out student loans have been praised by Democrats, while conservatives are not pleased as they are not confident whether the inflated economy is able to afford such costs. Marielle? Thank you, Paul Gachalian, for that live report. You will be amazed by a thin film speaker developed by researchers in an American university. Nina Armilio tells us why. Engineers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, have developed a loudspeaker as thin as paper that can transform any surface into an active audio source. According to Vladimir Vulovich, the director of MIT Nano, what looks like a slender sheet of paper can be plugged into the headphone port of your computer, and you can start hearing sounds emanating from it. It can be used anywhere. One just needs electrical power to run it. Mulevich wrote the paper with lead author Jin Chihan, a one-lab postdoc, and co-senior author Jeffrey Lang, the Vitesse professor of electrical engineering. The domes are 15 microns in height and about one-sixth the thickness of a human hair. They only move up and down about half a micron when they vibrate. The energy-efficient device can function with just about 100 milliwatts of power per square meter of speaker area. According to its developers, the thin film loudspeaker can provide active noise cancellation in noisy environments such as an airplane cockpit. Nina Armilio, UNTV. News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Mariela Toza reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening.
Our Kasang Bahay, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity from Monday to Friday, 9.30 p.m. Philippine time through the social media accounts of Members Church of God International. Before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. behind the news April 28, 2022. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Herlin Delgado. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Pio. We serve the people. We give glory to God.